Okay. So today we are here with Milana. Milana, if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, what is your name? Where were you born? And where did you grow up? And then where in Croatia is your family from? My name is Milena. I'm 21 years old. I was born in Harrisburg area of Pennsylvania, and that's where my family lives. Um, my mom's side of the family is from Kirk, an island in Croatia. When and why did your family decide to move from Croatia to the United States? I know you mentioned it was your mother's parents, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know the full reasoning, but I just believe it was for, like, job opportunities and, like, you know, ex- money chances and money opportunity. So did you, you grew up in Pennsylvania, right? So what is the Croatian and general Balkan community like in Pennsylvania? If you can talk a little bit about that. I think the Croatian population in Pennsylvania is pretty high. Um, There's a larger population here in Pittsburgh, but at least in my smaller community, I, um, there's a community in Steele in Pennsylvania. And that's like a majority of the people I know and like the people I surround myself with for like the Croatian American community down there is from still in Pennsylvania. So where do Croatians in Pennsylvania meet? Do you guys like have churches that you like come together at like halls? What are what's the meeting place? Yeah, my Croatian American community in Steelton is like from a like a Croatian church, um, the parish. And then also we meet with like, uh, I just know of other organizations, like lodges through the Croatian Fraternal Union. Um, That's how I've met a lot of other people in like Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh area. I know there's a good amount of Croatians, Croatian Americans in Arizona, but I'm not exactly sure where their meeting place is. I know they have an organization. Um, But yeah, that's really interesting to hear about how the different diasporas meet in different places across the country. So you shared with us that you did folklore, the the folk dancing, and played um, tambura growing up. Can you tell us about this? Sure. So my mom and my cousins, like everybody in my family has really grown up doing it. And I think it's like my like my best memories from my childhood because I like that's how I know all of my friends at home. I'm closer with those friends than I am with friends from school. Yeah, I just like surrounding myself with people that knew like what was also going on at home. And like we had like inside jokes about like how our grandmothers acted and stuff like that. Yeah, that's super cool. I did the Serbian folk dance and I also agree that I met some of my best friends through that and have some amazing memories. We would travel to California to dance at other people's festivals, um, at other Serbian churches festivals. So those are definitely some amazing memories. Do you have like a specific, I don't know, favorite dance that you learned growing up? I don't have a favorite dance, but I fondly remember like learning very complicated dances and our instructor like you know yelling at us and it's all part of the experience like you know our cousins and my mom everybody went through it like the high stress the night before the show it's just it's a fun environment I also did like folklore dancing growing up and yeah I remember like there is nothing like that kind of workout like that is the most intense Mm -hmm. like cardio like no other a show in the summer you know sweating in your costume and the heat yes yes when you're like fully like dressed up and it's like it's so hot and then the you just gotta smile the wool, the wool. Yes. and then you just like have to have the smile and you just like have to keep going yeah yeah no I remember like people would be like oh my gosh why are you sweating so much when we had practice and I'm like how are you literally not sweating yeah. you're literally jumping up and down so by being involved like for like we both did our folk dancing folk dancing for our respective cultures so for me, that's really shaped my identity, helped me really learn a lot about my culture and history and like the folk traditions, especially. So I was wondering if doing that in your childhood has helped shape your cultural identity and like your understanding of like Croatian history and Croatian culture. Yeah, I would say it definitely gave me an understanding of the history and the culture because I we've done dances from different regions. So I've always been able to learn the history of different regions, um, regions of other people I knew, like uh, other areas in Croatia that maybe my family wasn't as familiar with that I like got to hear about like the country as a whole rather than just where my family's from. Yeah, I, re- I 
that's something that I really like about the different folk dances and learning the different ones, especially when you like learn a little bit about the re region that the dance is from. Do you speak Croatian, Serbo-Croatian? Do you speak the language? Yeah, so very minimally. I started taking classes here at Pitt. Um, it's kind of combination like Croatian, Serbian, Montenegrin, and Bosnian. Um, so I started taking it last year, and then I did a program over the summer, and I actually studied abroad in Montenegro during the summer. Oh, and that's then cool. this year I'm continuing my third year of language. That's so cool. So I have a question about that, because ASU, I've never taken a advantage of it, though. They have a Bosnian-Croatian BCS Bosnian Croatian Serbian program. So when you're in a cl like that class, because there's so many different dialects, which mm -hmm. dialect do you focus on? Is it whatever the professor chooses to focus on? Like, you know, like how different words are pronounced, like pesma versus piesma, like how, how do they decide which you're going to learn? Yeah, so my class is pretty small. And like the professor really wants to know like why you're interested in like your family history. So she knows that I'm Croatian and she always makes sure to include like what I would say. Um, and she asked me about like my family's dialect, like how would I say it? Do I know the right way to say it in my own dialect? No, yeah, that's, so that's I teach it there, side by side. It's just an amazing experience to like, I guess, really sit down and study like languages that we either grew up speaking or we heard being spoken around us. And I think that's a really important way for us to retain our cultural identities and to pass down traditions. Our next question is that we noticed that you're involved and you mentioned this a little bit um, in your bio that you sent us that you're involved in the Bosnian Croatian Montenegrin Serbian club at the University of Pittsburgh. Can you tell us a little bit about your involvement and how you got involved in that club? Yeah, I got involved in the club the first semester that I came to Pitt and I initially started taking the language course and it was like advertised to me through the language department. So I joined then just because I wanted to meet other people that were of like the same culture. I knew that there was a larger population here in Pittsburgh that were like people of this culture. So I liked um, getting to meet people. And then I was studied abroad for a semester in Italy. And then when I came back into it this year, I decided that I wanted to have more of a like a leadership role in it and like help organize things and keep things more consistent and, you know, help out with promoting our culture and just like spreading it and educating people. Do you have like a title of your position? Yes. So I'm business manager. I manage the funds. But, you know, as like a more complete picture, I'm, you know, just help with everything. Okay, yeah, that's that's really cool. That's really great that you're involved in that and that University of Pittsburgh um, has that. I know at American University, I felt like the lack of Balkan community. Um, and yeah, that's something I definitely noticed there. And it's just very interesting how at the different universities, depending on the population, like how we come together to, you know, Make sure that, I don't know, if we're eating the food, practicing the language, just doing things related to our culture, especially like for people that are um, in a university that's outside of their hometown. You mentioned this a little bit that you studied abroad in Montenegro over the summer. And I've noticed on Instagram that you've also visited Croatia over the summers. Um, can you share a memorable experience or two about visiting the Balkans? And did you experience any specific emotions or feelings? I think my favorite experience was in 2018. Um, I was there during the World Cup and I went with my dad. My dad isn't Croatian, but he went with me to the main square of Zagreb to watch on the big screen. The I think it was quarterfinals or semifinal game. I just remember being in an, ent in an entire crowd of people in like checkered jerseys, everybody singing the songs that I knew. I just felt so proud and like so at home with like an entire group of people that like do what I do and like know what I know. Another really fond memory is visiting my family's island and like seeing the house where my grandmother was born and swimming where my mom swam and where my grandparents used to hang out. Yeah, I think that's really special. I also, over this past summer and the summer before, I visited the village where my grandmother was born. It's in Bosnia, a tiny little village. And it's just really special to like see where you come from and the fact that 
you know, we know where we come from. I think that's something really special that we need to hold on to, like knowing where our p- grandparents are from, where our great grandparents are from. I think that's a really special thing about having Balkan heritage, because I think our family histories are so important to us. And I think that also makes it important to, you know, keep our cultures alive and sustain them in the United States. So on that note, do you have a favorite place that you have visited either in Croatia, Montenegro, maybe both since you've spent time in both countries? In Croatia, I would still say it's the island where my family's from, Kirk, just because it's so special and it's like a place that I can talk about and my cousins know exactly what I'm referring to and just, yeah, it's a special, you know, like story and history in my family. And in Montenegro, I visited a lot of national parks and I just, those were a lot of fun. And it was really unique to see like the beautiful places and the landscape of that country. So you mentioned when you went to see the World Cup in Zagreb that you heard like the songs that you know. So do you listen to Balkan music? And do you, if so, do you have any favorite songs or artists? Yeah, I do listen to Balkan music. Um, I think my favorite artist is Severina. So this is something that I wanted to ask you because I'm half Serbian, you're half Croatian. We're like all like Serbian American, Croatian American, Bulgarian American. So Anna and I, this is something we've discussed together that like we've dealt with our own sense of like identity crisis in a way, whether it's feeling too... Balkan or to American in different settings. I wanted to ask you if you've ever experienced these feelings and like how you've dealt with them if you have. I don't think I've experienced it much on the outside with like external factors because um, at least my last name isn't Slavic, isn't Slavic sounding. Um, But my dad is British and I do feel like I am very connected and tied to my Croatian roots and I try to give some attention to my British roots as well but like there's not as strong of a community for me to get involved with that way so I feel like that's kind of my battle internally. I definitely can understand that for me I've always felt I don't know like you more connected to your Croatian roots I've always felt a lot more connected to my Serbian roots because I would say that's the primary culture that I grew up in although like you know I was in between two cultures like that's the one I connected with most and I feel like most at home in so I definitely resonate with you on that like finding a balance of of sorts um and that being like an internal conflict next question is so our project is about the Balkan diaspora and building peace in America in that way so I wanted to ask you what you think about this idea of an overarching Balkan diaspora like keeping our individual ethnic cultures and identities alive um, but also like being able to talk across ethnic lines and to build connections. I think it's a wonderful idea um just like my my club at Pitt, you know, sometimes people comment like, oh, don't those groups of people hate each other? And like for me, no, when I find someone else that's like from a Balkan culture, I get excited because like they know a little bit about how I grew up. They know the same lifestyle. So I think it's really exciting to find people of the same culture. I think that's something that's like that excitement is something that's like really prevalent or around or like among like Balkan American Americans just because I feel like because there's not as many of us here just like hearing that somebody has like you said like a little bit of that tradition or a little bit of an idea of like how we grew up it's like it's that excitement that brings us together so like I definitely relate with you on that well I remember I think you reached out to me when we were both going to American University like the summer beforehand I think you reached out to me and we connected over the fact that we're both Balkan so yeah that's definitely something that I think is really special where we're like hey like you're from this region so am I let's be friends I I love when that happens I love when those connections happen do you have any advice on preserving like our Balkan cultures while living in the United States like whether it's about your involvement in like a student organization or about like listening to music learning the language do you have any advice for people about how they can and should preserve their Balkan heritage I think I'm like an exciting way in a fun way is listening to the music and also keeping up with like the sporting events because there's so many popular figures even just in American sports 
that you can, you know, follow and connect to. Like, we're just reaching out to other people that you, like, I found you at American. Like, just finding other people that are, like, of the same culture. You know, you can surround yourself with people that know the same things you do.